Hello guys and welcome back to Makeup FOMO. Again, we are in a little bit of a new background or my living room because we are going to be making a like kind of one of those Pinteresty like braided big comfy chunky blankets. And so I made one of these actually a while ago back in like probably January I made it and it turned out so well and it was so easy to make and so much more affordable than buying one online or um, you can get these very 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 expensive and so I made a much much cheaper much cuter and like customized version for myself so it's actually back there in that basket and there's Willie um, so I'm going to show it to you guys but I'm going to be making basically the same blanket just with different colors and I'm super excited I actually learned how to make this from another YouTube video so I will link that down below but I figured since I was gonna be making it again I might as well film it and just show you guys how I did it I'm definitely not taking credit I didn't come up with this at all I'm not like that crafty of a person but it did come out really really well and it was really fun to make and it's just such a nice affordable way to just like make a nice kind of cool like statement decorative blanket this would also make a really really good gift i'm totally thinking for next christmas like everybody in my family is gonna get one of these because who doesn't just love a nice cozy chunky blanket plus one that looks and feels and would be very expensive if you got it anywhere else so that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today. I hope that you enjoy, and let's get started. So let me just show you guys the other one that I made. The colors I'm doing this time are a bit different, but I used this, like, cream color, and then I used this kind of, like, grayish, purplish, brownish kind of shade, and it is so beautiful. So basically, half of the blanket is this cream color, and then, like, the other half of the blanket is this like purpley gray color and this is actually massive this is I'm not exactly sure how long this measures out to be when it's like totally stretched out but you can fit multiple people under this blanket and so this is kind of the pattern that you get this really pretty like braided pattern so this is just kind of how I styled it over here in this corner so obviously this time I want to do something a little bit different in terms of the colors so I don't have multiple of the exact same blanket so what I I decided to do this time is I got four skeins of this really pretty gray the brand that I use is um, Bernat blanket I get the big they do have like a thinner version of it which you totally could use and then what I really liked about that blanket that I did is the contrast between the two different colors but I didn't want to do a half and half again I wanted to try something different so what I decided is I got this really gorgeous like baby sky blue color I just love this shade of blue and I'm just gonna do one skein of this and so I figured if I just have like you know basically like a quarter of it in this color and the rest gray that that, that would look really pretty kind of just more or less like a band at the very top but you can totally customize this however you want you can do what I did and do half and half I think that blanket I used six skeins um, I'm just doing five for this one because that one's like really big so I'm only doing five this time but you can certainly do six you can do way more and do seven or eight if you want it to be huge you can make it really small if you wanted to make one for like a baby you could just do like two or three but if you wanted to do half and half you can do three and three or if you wanted to switch it up and do like blue at the top a couple gray like two or three gray and then do another color at the bottom or blue again at the bottom and kind of like do like a border of a different color that would also be really cool you can alternate and do like blue gray blue gray blue gray there's a million options which is what's so fun about this and what makes it a really cool gift idea is you could just customize it to you know someone's house if they maybe recently moved you can do the colors of their house or if they're like I said having a baby or something like that if they're getting married you can make it their wedding colors you could just do so many cool things with this idea which is what I love about about it so I'm gonna unpack all this stuff and show you guys how to make the blanket and just excuse my cats are definitely gonna be like all up in this situation because they always are so where's the end of this so this is odd I just bought this this is brand new and here's the beginning of it and like a couple feet into it it looks like someone tied it back together I'm kind of confused by that. Maybe they, I'm confused. That's kind of the nice part about making this blanket, like little things like that will easily be hidden in the blanket. So obviously you want to get the most out of your yarn as possible. So I start the first loop down at the bottom of course, and I don't want to leave too much of a tail. So the first thing you want to do is just create a loop by literally just crossing the yarn across from each other and then looping the longer end of the yarn, not the tail right through that loop you just made 
to make another loop. So let me do that again for you. So you're just gonna cross the yarn across each other, just like this, and then you're gonna take the longer end of the yarn, push it through that loop you just made, and make another little loop, just like that. And now you have your first knot. So now that you have your first loop super secure, basically what you just did is what you're gonna continue doing to make the rest of the blanket. So what I like to do is I pull it from behind, I just put my fingers through that first loop that we made, grab the longer end of the yarn, grab it with my two little fingers, and pull another loop through. Now you wanna make sure that you're keeping the loops as similar in size and as consistent as you can. So I pull a little loop through. I like to keep my loops fairly tight. So again, putting your fingers through, grabbing the longer end, and pulling a little loop through. So it's gonna look a little bit funny until you get a few loops into the blanket. So don't, oh hey Nala. <laughs> so don't start freaking out if it doesn't look perfect yet. Just keep going. Now we've done four and five loops. And so you can kind of customize this to make up as big or small of a blanket as you want. The video that I watched, they did like 20, you can do 15, you can do 25, you can literally do as many loops as you want to make it as wide as you would prefer. So again, putting my fingers through that first hole, grabbing the longer end of the yarn in the back, looping it through. So here's that little weird knot. So watch this, I'm gonna pull this through. I'm gonna pull it right into the loop there. And see now that's part of the loop. And so I wanna stop with that knot kind of right in the middle of this loop so that when I pull this next loop through, see how it just basically formed right into that loop and all I need to do is grab a scissor and trim that little guy. And now you can't even tell that there was ever that knot there. And if you feel for any reason that you did too loose of a knot in one of your previous knots, obviously if it's too far back, it's a little too late, but you can always just push it back through Tighten it up if you need to, and then keep going. So it's really, it makes it really difficult to mess this up, which is really good for me. Okay, so I did 30 knots, just about, and this is how long it is. So it's pretty long, it goes all the way from basically the top of my foot up to my waist. So that's the kind of length and width that I like. So just use yourself as a reference and gauge like how big do you like your blankets. Now we're at the end of the first row and kind of the border. What you're gonna wanna do just to kind of guide yourself is move your skein and all your extra yarn to the other side so that you're now basically perpendicular to your border and you're gonna use this very last loop to start your new row. So instead of going up this way like we were before and we were adding on this way, we're actually gonna use this loop. We're gonna kinda turn it this way so that rather than facing straight ahead, it's kinda flipped and it's facing up and you're gonna pull the longer end of the yarn right through that. So now you're gonna start working sideways instead of up and down. So we're gonna use the previous loops that we have made along this border to make the next row. So we're gonna use, for example, this little loop here. I'm gonna reach in, grab some of this extra long yarn end, and loop it through like this. And so you're basically gonna use this border as your new way of stitching, pretty much. So we're gonna, again, stick our fingers through this little loop pull through and we're just gonna basically make a whole line of loops like this all the way across again just like before try to keep your loops as similar in size as possible just so that your blanket comes out really consistently I also just super quick wanted to talk about the price so these like I said online can be super expensive like 60 to 80 to 100 dollars but when you make them they're so much more affordable so i think full price these um big blanket yarn skein of the burnout yarn is 9.99 each i'm pretty sure so if you paid full price which you know i try not to do generally um this would be like a 50 to 60 dollar blanket 
but I always just wait till Michael's, that's where I typically get these, have a sale, and sometimes they'll have the yarn on sale, plus there'll be like coupons off your whole purchase, so typically when I bite the bullet and get these, but I typically have been able to get these for around like five to six dollars per skein rather than 10, cutting the price of the blanket in half. So this whole blanket with five, and I believe I got these for like five or six dollars with like coupons and sales, this will be like a $25 to $30 blanket rather than like 60 to 100. So definitely stack your coupons, wait for these to be on sale. So for me, these blankets take more than one day to do, just because I'm usually doing a million other things. So I'll work on it for a little while, come back, work on it for a little while, come back. So I'm going to just work on this a little bit more and, and then I'm going to show you guys how to work in the next one, just so you can kind of like fuse it with the second and then third and then fourth and then fifth. So that's kind of like an easy transition between them. Just so y'all can see that. And Okay, so this is the size of the blanket so far and what it's looking like. Just kind of like a tip that I didn't mention earlier. This side that I'm like knitting on is kind of like the back of the blanket and you can still see the braids, but you'll notice when you flip it over, they stand out a lot more because this is like the outside of the braid. Like that's the flat part and this is kind of like the ribbed part. So just keep in mind that the back of the blanket is gonna be the side that has like more of the detail. But anyway, so this so far, which it's kind of hard to give you a frame of reference, but like here's my hand. So it's pretty big so far. I'll actually measure it once I'm done. But this is with three skeins of the gray so far. So that's with three. I'm actually about to add the fourth one on. And so obviously I've already connected a bunch of them, but I wanted to show you guys how I do that. It's super simple, but I wanted to make sure I included it. So this is the end of the yarn that's making up the blanket right now. And this is the end of the new skein of yarn. And so literally it's as simple as just tying a knot. I don't want to waste, so I don't do too big of a knot, but you also don't want it to be too small. So I just make it super tight. And then you just take your scissors and just trim off the little tails. So I'll show you once I get to the part where I actually incorporate it. I just have a little bit left. But it makes this little knot, which honestly, once you squeeze it enough, it doesn't really stand out much. And honestly, once you just start weaving it, it just gets lost in the middle of the blanket. Like you'll, you'll barely be able to notice. You can find them if you're looking for them, but it's really hard to notice where they are in the middle of the blanket. So it's a really good way to just incorporate your next skein. All right, y'all, so I'm about to work the knot in here. The knot is right here, as you can see. So I'm gonna put it through this loop here. 
And what I'm gonna purposely do is kind of nestle it into the middle of the loop. And now it's gonna make it a little tricky when I come back around because this loop is very small because I don't want this to stick out too much. So I'm gonna kind of keep it stuck in the center and this will just be a small loop for next time, but that's no big deal. In that way, the knot, as you can see the back of it, it's just stuck in the middle of this loop and it's a really good way to hide them. So I have this rolled over quite a few times because this is getting super long, but I just finished with the fourth skein of the gray, so I just added on in a little knot the blue, which that is such a pretty blue. I'm so excited to be using that. So I just attached that here. If you want to be like really nice about it, you could just trim the tail of the gray when you're at the end so that you start the blue kind of like cleanly right on the end of a new row but i just i didn't want to like waste all that gray so i just started in the middle and you it honestly doesn't make that much of a difference and you can't tell that much so i just added on kind of wherever the gray stops but you can choose to start it at the very beginning of a row if you want to do that Okay, so now I'm getting to the very end of my skein of yarn of the blue, and so I'm going to show you all how to cast it off or basically like kind of curve it around and end the blanket. So this is the very edge of the blanket here, and so we have the very, you know, last couple loops here. What you're going to do is do what you would normally do to start a new row by taking the end of this and looping it through the final loop. So normally you would do that and then you would just start looping through and start a new row. But instead of doing that, what we're gonna do, you wanna make sure this loop is a little bit bigger than you've been doing before. And you're gonna do one more loop, just like you normally would. But instead of continuing down and making continuous loops, you're gonna pull this loop from the second row through the first loop, just like this. Then you're going to make another loop in the next row Pull it through again, make these fairly sizable. And you're gonna pull that loop through the previous loop. So as you can kind of see, we're starting to make a new braid along the end. So again, you're gonna keep this loop here, make one more, and we're gonna stick that one through the previous one. Okay, so I'm making the very last little loop here and pulling it through at the corner. So now we have the tail, the edge of the blanket, and our last little loop. And so this is pretty simple. You can literally just tie it. Kind of like it's just a standard like shoelace tie. Just feed it back through. And then that caps it off really nicely. And then what you can just do with the tail, if it's really long, mine's kind of long, you can trim it. You can really simply just weave the tail back through the edges of the blanket and it hides right in. I finally finished. I'm actually so matching the blanket right now. This is not intentional. But it is finally done. Let me show you. So this is what it looks like. We just measured it and it is five feet long and three and a half feet wide approximately, which is a perfect size. Basically, if you're five feet tall, this will cover all of you. But as you can see, just the detailing on the edge, doing that little like loop through, just makes this really, really pretty braided border. And then you can see how it kind of just really like nicely flows into the gray. And so this is kind of like the flatter side. This is the slightly more like textured side. Again, the gray has this really pretty 
braided border all along it. So that is going to be everything for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or need clarification on anything, um, like I said, that video that I used to learn how to do this will be linked down below. But of course, if you have any questions, also just let me know in the comments. If you guys would like to subscribe, we would love to have you. We have so much fun here. And until next time, I will see y'all in our next video. Bye, guys.